Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on vapor compression cycle with superheated vapor before compression. So first I will read what is the given problem. A vapor compression refrigeration plant works between pressure limits of 5.3 bar and 2.1 bar. The vapor is superheated at the end of compression. It's a temperature being 37 degree Celsius. The vapor is superheated by 5 degree Celsius before entering the compressor. If the specific heat of superheated vapor is 0.63 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, find the coefficient of performance of the plant. Use the data given below. So here the table is given. Now if we observe this table, here the pressure in bar is given, then the saturation temperature, liquid heat and latent heat is also given. Now let us first understand what is the given data and which factors we have to find out. Now if we observe there are the pressure limits that is given. So for this pressure limit we will understand this pressure enthalpy diagram. Now here are the process 4 to 1 and 2 to 3. The, these two processes are taking place at constant pressure and the range is given that is 5.3 and 2.1. So process 2 to 3 is at higher pressure and process 4 to 1 is at lower pressure. So we can say that the pressure at point 2 that is P2 which is equal to P3 and which is also equal to P2 dash which is equal to 5.3 bar. And for the process 4 to 1 that is pressure P1 which is equal to pressure P4 which is equal to pressure P1 dash which is equal to 2.1 bar. So this is the pressure limit. Now the steam is getting superheated up to 37 degree Celsius. So here the temperature is given at point 2. So T2 is equal to 37 degree Celsius because the temp this uh, steam is getting superheated after compression. So after compression the steam is in the superheated state. So that is given. So we have to take here the point 2 is at the superheated state and T2 is equal to 37 degree Celsius which is equal to 310 Kelvin. Now it is given that before compression what is the difference in between temperature that is T1 minus T1 dash that is before compression also steam is getting superheated. So what is happening? It's a temperature is getting increased and this T1 minus T1 dash which is equal to 5 degree Celsius. So steam is getting superheated for this 5 degree Celsius. So we have to write T1 minus T1 dash is equal to 5 degree Celsius. So when this steam at this point 1 dash is on the saturated vapor line and after superheated its temperature is getting increased and the entropy is also getting increased. So point 1 will be here and the process 1 to 2 is the taking place that is the compression process is taking place at the constant entropy. Now this Cp that is the specific heat at constant pressure that is also given 0.63 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin because here this process 2 to 3 that is at this uh, pressure P2 or pressure P1 this process at constant pressure. So here we will mention that specific heat at constant pressure which is equal to 0 0.63 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Now we will understand the diagrams for the superheated vapor before compression. So what is the change? So what is the change in temperature entropy diagram? So before compression when the steam is getting superheated. So from this point 1 dash it's a temperature and entropy is getting increased. And then it is getting compressed at constant entropy. So here is the changes. Then what is happening to pressure enthalpy? So when it is getting superheated and that superheating heat, process takes place at the constant pressure. So we have to show here this horizontal line and it's a enthalpy is getting increased. So here the horizontal line from 1 dash to 1 and then the compression process is taking place. So here is the 
process 1 to 2. So this is the changes that we have to mention. Now we will move for the table. So now we will observe the pressure for 5.3. So here is the pressure 5.3 that is at 0.23 and 2 dash. So what is the data? So at this point 2, 2, 2 and 3 the temperature is given. So saturation temperature is given. So saturation temperature in degree Celsius. Now if we observe this saturation temperature at 5 uh, saturation temperature that means the two points 2 dash and 3 are at constant temperature. So how we can write this? Temperature that means T 2 dash which is equal to T 3. These two points are at the constant temperature that is equal to 15 0.5 degree Celsius. So we have to convert it into the Kelvin that is 15.5 plus 273. Then we will move for the next that is the liquid heat. So liquid heat means what? So liquid heat that means heat means enthalpy. So we have to move here as the enthalpy. So the enthalpy at this 5.3 bar that is the enthalpy at point this point 2, 3 as well as 2 dash. So it is given that liquid. So for liquid we have to refer here the saturated liquid line. So H for liquid we will use here as a F and it is the point 3 is on that. Uh, saturated liquid line so HF3 which is equal to 56.15 now latent heat so latent heat in kilojoule per kilogram so latent heat that is the phase change process and phase is getting changed during the process 2 to 3 and that is the during this process 2 to 3 what is the heat is getting involved that is the latent heat so latent heat we will say that that is there are uh, both the phases are getting involved that is liquid and gases so we will use here heat for the H then for the phase change we will use here letter F letter G and during the process 2 and 3 so I will write HFG2 which is equal to HFG2 dash which is equal to HFG3 which is equal to 144.9 now we will move for the next that is the pressure at 2.1 bar so this is the lower temp lower pressure that is the pressure during the process 4 to 1 now what is the saturation temperature so here is minus 14 degree celsius now if we observe during the process 4 to 1 this process is taking place at the constant temperature so we can say that the temperature at point 4 that is T4 which is equal to T1 dash which is equal to minus 14 degree Celsius. Now what is the liquid heat? So liquid heat that is 25.12. So here the heat during this process 4 to 1. Now here liquid heat that is here is the saturated liquid line. So I will extend this point 4 on the saturated liquid line. Now if we observe we have to take this projection so here is the point of intersection and this gap is called as the enthalpy that is the liquid heat during this point 4 so HF4 so I will take here HF4 which is equal to 25.12 now this point 4 is getting extended up to this saturated liquid line so this point 1 also we can extend this and point 1 dash we can also extend this so HF4 that is equal to we can also say which is equal to HF1 dash which is equal to HF1 now we will move for the latent heat so what is the latent heat during the process 4 to 1 so here process 4 to 1 is also the phase change process so during the process 4 to 1 so latent heat means there are two phases that are getting involved so we will write here hfg and during the process 4 to 1 so we will say that hfg4 which is equal to hfg1 which is equal to 158.7 now we have to calculate the coefficient of performance for this cycle 
सो वॉट इज द फॉर्म्यूला सो फॉर्म्यूला इज दैट एच वन माइनस एच एफ थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय एच टू माइनस एच वन सो लेट अस फर्स्ट ऑब्जर्व वॉट इज द एच वन दैट इज द एंथाल पी एट दिस पॉइंट वन दैट इज एच वन सो हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दिस सो फर्स्ट वी हैव टू राइट दिस एच वन इज इक्वल टू एच वन डैश प्लस सी पी टी वन माइनस टी वन डैश नाउ वॉट इज द एच वन डैश सो दिस वन डैश इज ऑन दी सैचुरेटेड वेपर लाइन so for this saturated vapor line the enthalpy is not given so here only liquid heat is given so again we have to calculate what is the h1 dash so how we can write this h1 dash that is hf1 dash plus hf g1 dash plus cp t1 minus t1 dash so what is the cp that is given in the data that is 0.63 and t1 minus t t1 dash that is also given in the data so we can take it it from the directly now we will first find out what is the h1 dash so how to find out this that is hf1 dash so this 1 dash point if i extend on the saturated liquid line so here will be hf1 dash so what is the value of hf1 dash so here this 25.12 then what is the value of hf g1 dash so that is the hf g1 dash that means phase change process that is the latent heat during this point 1 dash so this latent heat during this point 1 dash that is we can say here hf g4 hf g1 and we can also say hf g1 dash so here we have to take 158.7 now all the other values are known that is given from the data then we will move for the h2 so how to calculate this h2 that is the enthalpy at this point 2 which have we have formula h2 dash plus cp t2 minus t2 dash now h2 dash is on the line of saturated vapor line so for this vapor line the values are not given only liquid heat is given so how to find out this so again we have the formula to find out this h2 dash so we know that h2 that is hf plus hf g2 so h2 dash we have to take here hf2 dash plus hf g2 dash that means liquid heat plus latent heat so what is the liquid heat at this point 2 dash so again we will extend this point 2 dash on the saturated liquid line so here at this point what is the enthalpy so here hf3 that is equal to hf2 dash and that is equal to we can write here hf2 because both are on the same line so here hf2 dash we will take here 56.15 and then what is the value of hf g2 dash so hf g means latent heat so what is the latent heat at this point 2 dash so again we will move for the latent heat so here is hf g2 which is equal to hf g2 dash so we will take here as a 144.9 and all the values that is t2 and t2 dash so here is the t2 dash which is equal to 15.5 and what is the temperature of t2 that is here 37 that is also given so all the other values are known so let us move for the calculations now we will put all the values related to h1 that is hf1 dash so here 25.12 plus hf g1 dash that is equal to 158.7 plus cp 0.63 and t1 minus t1 dash now here the difference is given in degree celsius so when we convert this temperature in kelvin the difference will remain same that is Plus two seventy three plus two seventy three. But when we take the difference, that will remain same. That is five. So we have to take here directly five. So what is the answer? One eighty six point ninety seven. Now for the value of H two H F two dash, that is fifty six point here fifteen plus H F G two dash, that is equal to one forty four point nine. So here H F G three that means point three. As well as point two dash are at the same level, so we can take here H F G two dash, then plus C P that is zero point sixty three and T two minus T two dash. So here T two is three hundred and ten Kelvin and T two dash that is also equal to fifteen point five plus 
273 that is 288.5 so when we solve this we will get 214.6 now we will put all the values so what is the value of h1 that is 186.97 minus hf3 that is 56.15 divided by h2 that is 214.6 minus h1 that is 186.97 so when we solve this we will get the answer for the coefficient of performance 4.735 so this is the answer